is an Australian attorney general who has been accused of raping a girl when he was a teen. This girl has recently died. She was depressed, and I don't know the extent, but apparently mentally ill. So I just wanted to start by saying something to the parents who are grieving for the loss of their adult daughter. I only knew your daughter for the briefest periods uh, at debating competitions when we were teenagers about 33 years ago. I was 17 years old and I think that she was 16 years old. And in losing that person, your daughter, you've suffered a terrible loss and you did not deserve so as we watch him speak, this is obviously a prepared speech. You can see him reading it. He looks down. He gives good eye contact. He knew her for a brief period. We're not showing extra stress on it. He is in stress and it's going to be an underlying stress more than likely throughout this whole thing. And I'm assuming it is because of the situation that he's in at the moment. It also is making him stiff, but he does move. So he's in stiffness. And then he slides out of it when he wants to talk and goes right back in. It never really leaves. And that's the underlying stress. Frenzied politicization of the circumstances of your daughter's death of the past week. And I have thought long and hard about the implications for you of what I feel that I need to say today. And I hope that whatever else happens from this point, that you will understand that in saying today that the things that are being claimed to have happened did not happen, that I do not mean to impose anything more upon your grief. But I so as he goes into that, the things that have been accused of, he, he's telling you that they didn't happen. The underlying stress doesn't peak. It doesn't subside. It's just still there. So if we don't see a rise or a fall and it's just a continuous, this statement doesn't lead to the, the conclusion of deception. I hope that you will also understand that because what is being alleged. So as he goes into this next statement, he actually shifts his weight and anchors himself for support, which is already leading me to believe that this is the weight. This is the stress that's coming did not happen, I must say so publicly. Prior to last Friday's story in the ABC, no one in law enforcement or the law or politics or the media ever put any substance of any specific allegations to me at all. I was aware over the last few months of a whispering campaign. Had the accusation ever been put to me before they were printed, I would have at least been able to say the only thing that I can say, and likely the only thing that I'm ever going to be able to say, and it's the truth, and that is that nothing in the allegations that have been printed ever happened. Even now, so as we see that one, and that's his definitive mark, he gives you a negative head shake, and it's actually quite slight. It's not exaggerated, it's not portrayal, which is a very good sign for him, at least, when he says, And I'm telling you the truth. He doesn't portray anything, he just gives you his truth. He's anchored himself what appears to be in the truth, or at least his truth, because as always, there's your story, my story, and the truth. Yeah. The only information I have about the allegations is what has been circulating online and in certain media outlets. The allegations appear to be about a period in early 1988 during an end of school debating competition at Sydney University. I was 17 years old and the other person was 16. We were both selected. Now we see his body getting even tighter. But we also hear the quiver in his voice. We see the tremble in his mouth. He's holding back emotion. With two others on the Australian school's debating team. And we went to Sydney University for an international competition. It was a long time ago. 
I'd always remembered it as a happy time. But I can say categorically that... We're also seeing the redness in his eyes as his fight to keep this emotion under control continues. What has been put in various forms, in allegations, simply did not happen. In this last week, I have tried to do what I've tried to do all of my life. Respect the rules and the processes and the law. I was determined to follow the process set out by the AFP Commissioner, and it's a process because of my background I know well, to not comment on allegations through the media because it risks prejudicing any investigation. So I've waited until the New South Wales Police concluded their consideration of the matter. And staying silent, following the rules, is a very difficult decision. While I have followed the rules and stayed silent, I have been subject to the most wild, intense, unrestrained series of accusations that I can remember in modern Australian politics. Maybe that's the new normal. I hope for everyone's sake it's not. A very difficult part of following those rules was that my colleagues have become the target of allegations and speculation themselves. My colleagues are my friends, and I'm deeply sorry to each of them for that. But I followed the rules. I did precisely the same thing the former opposition leader did, and I waited for the police to conduct and conclude the process that they apparently had on foot. I make no criticism of the former opposition leader. I now understand what he went through. He also followed the rules, and he did the difficult thing asked of all of us by law enforcement authorities. I think a difference for the former opposition leader was that for him, while the police process was on foot, the entire Australian media left the issue to be dealt with by the authorities and did not start an attempt to conclude a public trial by media. There weren't any calls for him to stand down or public reporting of anonymous, unsourced, untested material designed to try someone in public while they're... So as he gets through this, we start to see him relax. So our mind, or I should say his mind, has switched from, I need to apologize. There's been a whole lot of hurt, a whole lot of attacks on me. I need to address this. There are people being hurt and it's hurting. To now the mind has switched into, this is where the attack is coming from. I'm going to now be aggressive in my attack back. And the mind can control emotion a lot better. And you have an outlet for that stress that has built up. Because stress is a fight. If you can't have an out for your stress, it bottles up inside of you and it manifests itself in ugly ways. And when you can release it, hopefully in a healthy manner, you tend to loosen up. A duty bound to remain silent. You see the deep breaths come in, the body falls. It's starting to relax the muscles. The shoulders are coming down. I, I've never had any kind of formal or substantive detail or any detail at all about this matter of what was actually being alleged. So as he goes into this, we see that stiffness come through. He stays center. He's tight-lipped, which would say something else. There's some kind of deception there, or at least in his mind. And this part I really wanted to show you because someone could be giving off tells that may seem like deception. But you don't really know what's going on in that brain. And it's manifesting itself out. So as we watch this through... Nothing like that has ever actually been put to me. We see a little bit looseness. Nothing like that's ever been put to me. Up until last week, central to both our justice system and Australian journalism. So he adjusts himself. We're getting a little looser. Was that in reporting, just like in the justice system, it was always a basic foundational starting point that at the very least, for anything resembling a fair process, the accusation would need to be put to the person being accused. Before last Friday, all I can say is that I had heard, I think about November last year, a rumour that was being spread by a small number of people that I had 
somehow offended against someone decades ago in a way that was never specified to me. And now we see why. Earlier statement, no one has officially given him, you know, what happened. And now we get to the point here, his mind was in conflict because he did hear a rumor. It's, a, it's unofficial. He didn't deceive you in the previous statement, but his mind felt like that's not really true. You heard the rumor. You know what they're saying. Think about that when you sit there and watch someone and you see tells that say, oh, they're being deceptive. They may just have conflict of the mind of something they can't really substantiate as fact, but they feel in their gut that's what it is. Something that I am just personally struggling to even wrap my head around is that all of this has happened and I have never been contacted in any substantive form by anyone putting to me the details of what appears is now being alleged against me. No one put anything in any detail to me seeking a response. And now we see him much looser talking about this. He's explained why he feels guilt or some deception coming up. And now he can sit there and say, oh, I've explained. I've heard a rumor. Now I can really clarify on this whole official thing. That's actually someone you'd like to have around. They're kind of annoying. People don't really trust them that much because of what you just saw. But it's a good thing because they care about being truthful. They care about facts. They care about being honest. None of the senior politicians or ex-politicians that have known about these allegations and rumours have ever put them to me. No journalist has ever put the detail of the allegations to me in a way that would allow seeking a response. Not ever. All I know about the allegations is what I've read in the media. Before politics, I was a Crown Prosecutor. I worked in and believed in our justice system, and I, I still do. As a prosecutor for years, I helped victims. I prosecuted in trial and at sentence the most serious sexual assaults against women and children. That was my job before politics. I always did so trying to respect the rights of the people who were accused, but I always gave everything I had to doing right by the victim in the often traumatic process of the justice system. I've given the bulk of my adult working life to public service and the law. I have given absolutely everything I have had in the tank over the last year to our government, which has been desperately trying to help the country out of the worst crisis in its modern history. If I stand down from my position as Attorney General because of an allegation about something that simply did not happen, then any person in Australia can lose their career, their job, their life's work based on nothing more than an accusation that appears in print. If that happens, anyone in public life is able to be removed simply by the printing of an allegation. Every child we raise can have their lives destroyed by online reporting of accusations alone. My guess is that if I were to resign, and that set a new standard, well, there wouldn't be much need for an Attorney General anyway because there would be no rule of law left to protect in this country. So I will not be part of letting that happen while I'm Attorney General, and I'm sure that you will ask, so I will state to you, I am not standing down or aside. I've discussed with the Prime Minister today. That's right. You take that bull by the horns. Manhandle it into submission, boy. Stop letting accusations from lunatics hell-bent on destroying your rights rule the world. I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, Firo. Firo is one of the few cryptocurrency projects that I respect. And like most other cryptocurrencies, Firo is focused on safeguarding your financial privacy without compromising on trustlessness, which means no third parties are required and transactions are private by default. Firo also has an exciting roadmap to look forward to. Features such as Instant Send, where payments can both be sent and confirmed within seconds. There's also Elysium, which adds tokenization functionality similar to Ethereum, but it also enables these assets to enjoy Firo's privacy technology. There's many more things on the roadmap, and if you'd like to learn more, head over to firo.org.
If you'd like to learn more about analyzing body language, there is a video course available on Mandy's website for Gold subscribers, where Mandy teaches more about her techniques of deception detection. There's also other content such as the crime series and interesting mind series available to both gold and silver subscribers. If you like it, please share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.